Hi, this is a review of the IPVO POV webcam. And, uh, well, first, you, you're you kind of already seeing whether or not you want to buy this camera. Uh, it runs about $40. I'm using it now to record this. Now, like I said, it's 40 bucks, and you can already see the video quality is kind of meh. Um, and this is after monkeying around with it. But like I said, it's 40 bucks, or in my case, 20 because I got a deal where I got two of these things for the same price of 40 bucks. So what I'm going to do is actually not only show you what the webcam itself records video as, uh, but also just really what you're getting when you get this in the mail. So a little knife here, and I'm going to keep talking even though I'm not doing anything interesting, just to give you an also an idea of how the microphone operates and how good that is. Um, if you can, I try to rig up using another microphone or something and sync it up later or. Uh, just set your uh, capture program to configure um, the microphone from one source and the video from this. Alright, so just broke the seal on the camera. Now, my first complaint about the camera is it is a little bit smaller than I thought it would be. I mean, the as you can see, the ergonomics of it are designed that you can kind of hold it like a flashlight. It's meant for documents or close-ups. So I would have thought, well, it should fit my hand. It should feel like I'm holding a flashlight, but then I've got these gorilla paws, and the models they get for some of those photos, I swear, are toddlers. So, ah oh well, I'm used to that by now. Okay, so first you get the little quick guide and the software disk. And a quick little note about the software disk, I had a little trouble installing the software from the disk. I had to go directly to IPVO, but that's just because I was running System Mechanic, and it detected a virus threat. And what it detected was a file in here, a DLL file, uh, called trojan.dll, or 32 trojan, and it mistook it for a trojan virus. So, there's that. But like I said, you probably won't have any problem, and even then, the software takes about maybe two, three minutes to download, depending on your connection. It's about 20 megabytes, and pretty straightforward. Uh, so, okay. Now in here, you can see the camera, and pull that up a little bit higher and also the little clip stand. So let's pull the camera out so you can see just what you're getting. Alright, so here we are. So you can see what I mean about the flashlight and you can tuck the little cord under and you just hold it like that. So it's pretty handy, it's kind of a cool idea. A little on off switch and a snapshot button for still frames. Now, here's my first complaint, or I know I already made one complaint about the size, but you can dismiss that. That's just, you know, like I said, gorilla paws. Um, the actual mounting bracket, uh, you can see it's just this little Phillips head uh, plastic joint and a little ball and socket that just kind of half wedges in there there's no snap or click or anything to kind of really make you feel like it's secure. Um, and what gets me is you've got that as opposed to a tripod mount. Uh, maybe I'm old fashioned. I haven't had a webcam since about 1997, um, uh, back when they were on loan from NASA and only in black and white. Uh, but still, it just feels like, you know, a tripod mount. Like, real, I know this is a $40 webcam, or in my case, 20 but really, you couldn't give me a tripod mount, but you can probably rig something, so that's not a big deal. And most of you probably aren't going to need a tripod, just because this is still a pretty cool uh, little clamp here that fits over your monitor. I've just got this sitting on top of the box, thanks to the little stand that it comes with, which you just kind of slide in. Or is it snapping? Should have rehearsed this. There we are. Okay, so then you just do that. That's pretty handy, pretty convenient. Now, the big thing about this webcam that is meant to really kind of separate to be the pièce de résistance is the ergonomics imply that you're supposed to go handheld with it. And to accomplish that, to make the most out of that, it's got a macro mode, which is pretty handy because it's meant to be used as a document cam. Now. The tripod thing, I docked a few points for that. Uh, my other complaint is, and this is actually something you'll probably get really used to easily, is the focus ring is a little bit of a pain. Because you have to turn it 
almost a full 270 degrees to go from normal mode to macro mode. Saying, oh, and that just that's just busy work. That just seems like they really they, they couldn't have added slide or something, but oh well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how well the macro mode works, and it works mostly all right, and I'll basically give you sort of a document cam quality. So I'm going to go to shaky first person camera mode, or would it be second person because it's my hand? Anyway, all right, so we're going to take this off, and I'm going to rotate the magic focus ring to macro mode, so you can see I'm already out of focus. And put that around here. Okay. And I'm about maybe four or five inches from the IPVO box, so and you can see it's pretty damn good. You really can't get this kind of focus on any other webcam that I've ever seen. Um, so, there's the seal we just broke. Oh, and uh, something else I should point out. Let me put that on the box. Um, they're really insistent about you uh, installing the software before you even plug in the IPVO because the USB cable comes with this. This little sticker over it. I thought that was really funny. So, all right, we're going to go back. And the magic focus ring. Put this up. All right. Okay. So this is what the IPVO sees, and you saw what the IPVO looks like, and a, hopefully a relative idea of how big it is. Um, like I said, in case you're expecting, you know, a flashlight, it's a lot smaller than that. But that's only if you've got big hands, you should be worried. Now the software it comes, uh, comes with that I told you about, that really kind of worthless uh, for what most of you will probably use webcams for. Um, the big thing that the software is used for is capturing the still frames. Yeah, it can't even actually capture the video. I'm using Windows Movie Maker to do that here. Um, one thing the software does do that actually earns it a few points back after docking it for the size, the tripod mount, and the uh, goofy macro ring, um, is it actually has picture effects. Uh, you have to open the program and then change the picture effects settings and then you can close the program and it'll actually keep those settings until you open the program again and turn it back to default mode. Uh, the picture effects are kind of alright, they're distort mode, there's one called a uh, monitor which gives it horizontal lines like an old security camera. It even has, and I thought this was really cool, black and white mode. Um, because if you, as you can see, the color, meh, uh, even for a $40 webcam, or in my case 20 uh, and the color on most webcams, let's be honest, they're terrible, unless you can get a really good lighting system rigged up. Um, so, okay, I've got eight minutes, I want to keep this under ten. So, like I said, it's got some picture effects which are pretty cool. Um, don't try to install the software from the CD if you can, if you've got any sort of antivirus program set up. Um, but like I said, you can just download it from my people's website, and it's the latest version of the driver. Um, bit small, no tripod mount, but, and this is the image you get out of it, and it's pretty decent as webcams go. So, yeah, for 40 bucks, or in my case 20, you can do a lot worse. And like I said, if you, I won't tell you where I got mine for two for the price of one, but if you can find it, go with that, because that's really, that'll actually make it all worthwhile. Uh, so here we are, and I'm going to stop capture, and now. 